team is going to discuss the future of the data center. So thank you. Let's hear the thank band. you, Brady, and, and welcome. I actually have the easy presentation, and I'm glad because Carrie, that was phenomenal. I am glad. All those that that was She's bowing and curtsying in the back. First of all, thank you for joining us uh, today. We really appreciate you coming out, both prospects, customers, thanks to your business partners, and certainly the other uh, sponsors today. Uh, lucky for me, or lucky for you, I'm actually not going to give the presentation. Uh, my team is going to come up here and speak about what we're seeing in the future of the data center, and really not just the data center, but the interconnection <coughs> of whether it be for cloud computing, whether it be for service providers to connect and exchange traffic, whether it be for high frequency trading and what we're seeing in the enterprise space. So a lot of things, both from the technology, from applications, from architectures, changing the marketplace. And I think you'll, you'll find it enlightening what the team has to say. And then I will come back after the sandwiches and the break and moderate the panel and uh, we'll have some good Q&A from that perspective. So first up, I'm going to call up Mr. Trelizzi, Mike Trelizzi, our VP of Engineering and Construction. He's going to talk to you from uh, the, the engineering operational view of the data center. Thanks, Mike. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so what we're going to take a look at today is basically um, our expansion process and, and how we actually launch our interconnection centers. Um, but before we do that, just want to take a look at where our centers are located and what type of space we have in inventory today. So this is actually an overlay of our centers uh, on a U.S. Uh, map uh, that shows population per square mile. So as you can see, the dark blue, highly dense, uh, densely populated, 250 more people per square mile. Um, so over the entire U.S., we have about 625,000 square feet, um, 120,000 of that space has been installed this year. Um, we, we currently completed an expansion at uh, 111 AM, 40,000 square feet, uh, which was a bit of a misconception on that property about uh, there's no space. You know, Google owns the building, it's 100% lease, and, and while there's some truth to that, um, it doesn't really speak to the amount of co-location space that's available there. So our expansion, which was 40,000 square feet, um, in essence doubled uh, our existing or our previous capacity uh, in that space. And, and really, for the first time, we can offer big block co-location space uh, in that particular property. So 4,000, 5,000 square foot for, uh, you know, chunks of space. Um, so it, it's a great message. We want to make sure that it's delivered accurately. Uh, we also have a 20,000 uh, square foot expansion that's, uh, that's underway in Clifton. It's our third expansion in that building in as many years. Um, and this one actually comes on the, on the heels of another 20,000 square foot expansion we just completed in June. And Bill Coleman, our EPP of sales, is here. Um, we were able to kick off this third expansion because that second one was so heavily pre-sold. So thanks for that, Bill. We'll take space. orders. <laughs> so um, at a high level, you know, just want to say we're going to go through this process pretty sequentially, although you know there are a great deal of overlap in between these stages. But you know we go out there, and our objective is to effectively construct and maintain highly redundant, highly available, and energy efficient interconnection center worthy of our customers' business. Um, and it all starts with our site selection. So I put a note in here um, regarding the gating predecessor, which is really the market analysis. You know. What does the cur current supply and demand look like in a particular region? What does the competition look like? Uh, what are our space and power requirements? If we've been in that market, what has our past performance been? Uh, that kind of gives us the inputs on the pace and price for that model. And then we go out to those facilities and then, you know, we narrow them down and we get an idea of what our rents are going to look like, what our utility bills are going to look like, um, what's rough order of magnitude on our capital cost. So that goes into our business case. Um, so that we can determine what our ROI is going to be there. Um, so that being said, four primary areas of focus. So uh, property review, structural and environmental, we're looking at floor loads, ceiling heights, column spacing, distribution pathways, um, environment, in, environmental impact, you know, site considerations, you know, floodplain and wetland avoidance, things like that. 
uh, utility power. What kind of capacity is available today? Well, what is the potential to increase that? You know, what is the redundancy? How many substations is it fed from? Uh, what's the rate class and tariff analysis? You take a look into that. Uh, the voltage available. You know, can we distribute a medium voltage as opposed to some of the lower voltages? Um, does, the energy, uh, does the utility have a green quota? What is it and what are our renewable energy options uh, to purchase? Um, of course, uh, fiber proximity. So we are the interconnection company, interconnection and data center company. Fiber is a big deal for us. Uh, so we, we you know, leverage our you know, internal intent. We work with our carriers to see where they are. Um, and, and then obviously whoever's in that building at the time we do the, uh, the site tours. Uh, and then there are also you know, uh, lead, lead considerations. So uh, accessibility to public transportation, parking capacities, opportunities to maximize the open spaces. Um, there's one other thing that I personally look for when I go out to these sites that's not actually listed here. Anybody guess what that is? No one, no one. It's actually white space because if that's there, it makes my job a lot easier. Uh, <laughs> And it, you know, for, for that matter, you know, that's true. Part of our expansion do come by way of TKD leases, but we're speaking primarily of um, you know turnkey builds. So, planning and design. So we have a very diverse customer base, um, and to to the points made earlier, you know, we never really know who our end user is going to be. So we don't have that set of specifications by which we could build to optimize our efficiency in the site. So you know, we develop a document, call it our owner's project requirements, and, and what that is, it details the functional requirements of the project and expectations of how it's going to be used and operated. All right, so our design goals, um, performance criteria, budgets, schedules, supporting information. That information comes from sales, it comes from our operations teams, it comes from our engineering teams. Uh, and it really is imperative for our design teams and our builders to see the space through our eyes. Uh, so, you know, a new design firm that we bring on may look at, you know, big block white space that includes our passive meeting areas and includes HVAC galleries as being consumers of IT load when in fact they're not. Well, what happens then? Well, we overstate, you know, how much IT load we have and therefore we oversize our UPSs, and therefore we're building more conduits and more conductors that we don't need to, our switch gear is oversized, and it just leads to an inefficient site from an OPEX perspective and an inefficient use of our, our CapEx that's available to us. Um, so next step here is really getting into the uh, our basis of design document. And really this is engineers tell us they understand what we're looking for. So we want to understand you know, all the concepts and calculations and decisions and product selections used to meet what our requirements were. And then obviously we want to make sure so we're not architects, we want to satisfy all regulatory uh, requirements, standards, and guidelines. Uh, project team selection, of course we need our engineers, of course we want to select our, our, our builders, but it's equally as important to engage our internal resources. So. Who from operations, and we'll speak about their involvement in this a little bit later, but who from operations is going to be part of this expansion project? Who from project management? Who from sales and sales engineering should be involved in this? So they, they can be the subject matter expert and deal with potential clients on a pre-sale basis. Um, RIT, you know, minor detail? I don't think so. <laughs> Space needs phones, it needs wireless access. So um, very important uh, early step in our process. And then the pre-purchase specifications. So, you know, this is really where we started looking at, you know, the efficiency of the site. So, are we going to spec out Unity Power Factor UPSs? Are we going to do UPSs with Echo Mode where we run, um, you, you, we power our main bus by the static uh, switch as, as opposed to through the rectifier? Do we want to have some sort of intelligent paralleling where we have, you know, only the UPSs we need for capacity and redundancy and the other ones are in standby mode? Um, you know, with the output breaker open, you know, plug fans, VFDs, and the such are all kind of identified here in the pre-purchase um, portion of the project, and um, you know, it's sent out to all the vendors that we find suitable to bid the job. Uh, construction. So, detailed project plan is created. So it's 
kind of here where, where Eric step in and he gives me some unrealistic time frames by which to build this facility. <laughs> so we have a couple of builders here in the back from the Martin Group shaking their head. Yes, they understand because they've been on the other end of those motivational pep talks that uh, those time frames uh, you know, kind of inspire. So you know, we tell our guys, you're going to buy the job, you're going to you buy the schedule. Sometimes that schedule changes, but you know, that's how we roll. So um, our construction documents are distributed to the trades for bid. We hold pre-bid meetings, obviously, so that you know our vendors that are bidding the job know exactly what the scope is going to be. Contract award is made, budget's updated with the bid values, and locked, set in stone forever. Uh, permits are secured, trades are coordinated, construction begins, equipment delivery, site inspections, construction completion, and punch list. And again, because we're taking a sequential look, there's obviously you know, commissioning steps that happen within this phase, but we'll take a look at that on the next slide. So, what is commissioning? Uh, your basic purpose, provide documented confirma confirmation that the mission critical systems function in compliance to the criteria we set for. Does the site work as it's intended to work? Both at the system level and then, you know, as uh, yeah, at the overall level, because again, these are not necessarily discrete standalone systems. The data center is you know, one large system. Um, so, start really early on factory witness testing. So that's where we go out to the site, the manufacturer site, equipment has a chip, and they demonstrate to us that the equipment performs uh, prior to sending that. And really, it's around you know, does it perform? You know. Um, you know, do some sort of load back testing or something like that to make sure that you know it's a load worthy equipment before it's sent out. Component verification level two was everything shipped correct?